What's up guys, welcome back. So today we have a Demon Slayer drawing. We're going to be drawing Kokushibo sort of screaming. I found this cool image. Looks like a fan art. So I don't think it's official. By Otari902. So full credit to this person. It's really cool. It's like he's like screaming, holding his sword. So I thought I'd give it a go. So I'm on a landscape page. As usual, use a pencil and eraser and hit pause if I go too fast. So we start with his eyes and he has six eyes. Right, so center point of my page is about here-ish. So we'll come up and we start with the right eye, the middle set, right? And he's a set on top, a set in the middle, a set in the bottom. But we'll start with these ones first. So we'll just curve a line right around here. So his eyes are pretty wide, right? And he's got eyelashes, a lot of them, on top. So we'll do the top eyelid eyelashes first. And you can do it kind of sketchy if you want. You know, you can do these manga-style sort of sketchy lines if you want. So lots of eyelashes there on top. Do like so, and then bottom eyelid comes around, and they actually draw in its tear duct. So that comes around here, and then we'll just thicken up the back here as well. Okay, and there can be like some texture lines and eyelid lines and stuff just going around. This. Okay, so iris, they're quite small. So his iris, he's like looking down because his head is tilted back. So the iris is kind of bottom left of his eye ball. So it's looking down here. And inside these eyes, he's got that calligraphy that says his upper moon state, right? So we'll just draw it simply, right? So like so. And then there's like these little squiggle lines just down below it. So when you're zoomed out like this, obviously you can't make out the details, but we'll just draw it as best we can. And then we'll add some of those radial lines that go around his eye. Kind of like think spokes of a wheel or like that. You could do more if you wanted, but I think that's enough for me. Some lines just around the edge of his eye here as well. Okay, so we'll come over and do the other eye. So again, a big curved line, like so. Comes back to a little like spike back here. And you thicken this up. Right. And we'll add some eyelashes just sticking off here as well. Right, and then bottom eyelid line comes down around. They actually draw in the tear duct. And then we'll add this kind of thickness to the back of his eye here as well. Right, iris again, looking sort of down. So iris is down near the bottom of his eye, just there. And then of course we have the writing on the inside here as well, slightly different to this side. So like a line down, comes across down there. So if you type in, if you just Google search Kokushibo's eyes, you will get a closer up of this. I'm just doing it sort of basic because we're so far out. OK. 
okay and then those sort of lines that go out from his eye spiral out you can do as many as you want kind of thing and then a bit of an eyelid line just going around there texture lines just around his eye right we'll do the set of eyes above right so just above his eyelid line here we'll do the same thing again this curves around and they're kind of they're slightly smaller I think Eyelashes, bottom eyelid, there. Just add a spike to the end of his eye here. And then these eyes are slightly different, so there's no writing inside. But again, your sort of bottom here, and just like a pupil in the middle. And then he has veins in all these ones, right? So like these lines kind of radiating out and then the lines that go around each eye like this okay and then we we'll go over and do same thing over here so big eyelid line thicken it up and add eyelashes bottom eyelid then curves around down to the tear duct iris circle just there near the bottom and then pupil in the middle with some veins radiating out and then we'll do these lines that go around the eye now remember use your pause button if I go too fast Like so, and then, you know, some lines coming around this for eyelid and wrinkles kind of coming around his eye. So the bottom layer of eyes kind of come across his cheeks. So just below this one, we'll do the same thing again, just facing down, right? So curve line back there, add some eyelashes coming across the top and thicken up this line slightly. And his tear duct is in there, and then you do the bottom eyelid. And so, same position of the iris just with the eye turned so just here people there and then veins and then those radiating lines that come out from his eye they're kind of like the lines that Tanjiro has, you know, on his earring, coming the rays coming down from the sun. So maybe it's connected to that. I don't know. And the other eye, same thing. Never noticed that before, actually. All 
Right, and then bottom eyelid. Like so, tear duct. And then virus. Pupil. And some veins. And then the lines coming out. Roughly like that. And we'll give him some lines just going around his eyelid here. Like so. Right, so his he's like his head is like tilted back, right? So they're the eyes. That's basically all you gotta do for the eyes. And his head's tilted back, right? So his nose is like between these two eyes just here, and all we can see is like nostrils, right? So this up and down sort of V like that. And then they've got some shading just on the nose, like so. And the mouth just comes across here. So he's open mouth screaming, right? So small mouth first. <laughs> Looks a bit weird, but we'll just open it up, bring it down like this, kind of like a Dragon Ball characters when they're screaming, like real big, like that. And he's got like sharp fangs, so here, across like so, and sharp fangs on the bottom. And then his tongue. Maybe his molars at the back. Right, so. Chin. Relatively pointy sort of chin down there. Right. And then we'll just bring this up around the side of his face. So we'll go up for the jaw. up the other side and you're going to curve around his eyes so we'll go relatively close to his eyes now up to there and he's all hair that comes in along here so that's where we stop about like at his ear sort of level or where his sideburn would be right just near these eyes just stop there So we've got a sideburn just here at the top of his ear. Can't see it on this side really, but I'll draw it in. Right. Sideburns and then hair comes down all along, right? So he's got, and it's like it's his, they've drawn his hair kind of blowing in the wind kind of thing. It's been blown across his face this way. So you might cover some of his eyes, but it looks cool. So I'm gonna do it this way as well. So say top of his forehead, we've got this V kind of thing here. And you could do some like hair spikes that just come around for his hairline just here. And then we'll go down, add a bit of a hair spike here. And then the rest of his hair goes down towards his sideburn there. So the, the hair's been blown off this way on this side. So he's got these sort of, when he's like standing straight forward, his hair kind of hangs down here. So they're, both these things are being blown this way. So, say on, we'll go over here first. So we'll go. Spiking up and down like so. And then this will curve down to there. And to there. And then, so this comes across his face really towards his mouth, right? So it goes over all the way to it there, right? So you'll erase or color over anything under this. Another one this way. This goes like up here over his ear. So another one like here and then up this way. Back towards the top of his head. We can kind of see his ear 
kind of align with like the bottom of his fang kind of there right so you can just draw kind of his ear lobe or something inside here with a bit of a line there his other ear will be lined up with that roughly as well so it's like here somewhere and a piece of hair comes over that so and then we just have a couple more hair spikes here And this here comes over his neck, so so we'll draw in his neck. So his neck muscles just like here and we'll say here. And then his trapezius muscles come down this way. This way. Right, and he's got some hair that comes over this. So like under his chin. So that's like all hair inside here. And then it's fringe over the other side. So go back up here and we'll just do, do a big one sticking out this way. Just sort of flowing. Like so. Right, so then the rest of his hair kind of goes down behind his shoulders and his back, right? So, yeah, so we'll go up here. We have some spikes sticking up on top of his head, sort of here. It's still part of his fringe a bit. And then, let me see, just a different image now. Okay, so kind of goes off the top of my page a bit, right? So we'll just we'll add some spikes just here. And this comes around like so. And then we have another spike there. Down. And then this one will go out this way, right? So you'll see now all the, the hair being blown across his head out this way. And you, remember, hair moves, it's like, it's not like a static thing, so don't worry if yours isn't exactly like mine. We should just get the general shape. You'll be good to go. And this goes down like the whole way beyond this sword. So I'll just stop it here for a minute and then we'll go around the other side, right? So another one here. Adding all these spikes coming down his head. That's that one. So then these go big then. Behind his shoulder somewhere here. So this big one like goes behind his shoulder. Right, so we, we'll get some anatomy done sort of now. So he's got like a fist and a sword coming across here, right? So say like the outside of his shoulder, right? So trapezius be here. And like his neck muscles and stuff coming down to his collarbone, just there in the middle. So the center line for his chest is behind the hand. Say his shoulder will just like curve there. The shoulder on this side as well will do something similar. So like go around like that, right? And then there's this hand in the middle. So this is your like this is the whole shape for his body basically. He's like clenching a fist and his shoulders are in, right? So you're about half a head width. Well, you're a bit narrower than head width. So the width of his face will bring you out 
to where his shoulder would be if he was like standing straight. So a bit narrower, probably like three quarters of his face is about how far out the shoulders are. And then we have a fist here, okay? So we'll just do four knuckles. So we'll just go one, two, three, four. And each of these is a finger. Two, three, four, like that, right? And like there's like a skin line just here. And then this comes out to the back of his hand, down, wrist bone, off the page. Okay, and his thumb goes in behind the sword, but say like the back of his hand and his wrist will go that way as well. And then you have like knuckle lines and things. You know, just to show, try to give it a bit more of a hand sort of feel, these kind of knuckle lines and veins and stuff on his hand. Hands are always tricky, so pause that and see if he can do it. His thumb is behind the sword, right? So the handle of the sword will come out like here. If you want, you can use a ruler for the handle and the sword, but I think the sword slightly curves, so maybe we'll just do it freehand. So this thumb kind of goes up. behind that sword there. And it comes out the other side and goes behind the fist. So if you make a fist, you know, you know the thumb is behind the knuckles. And he is like a sharp nail here. Right, so then hilt to the sword and handle. So handle will go this direction. It's all right if this is bumpy because it's covered in sort of fabric. And the end is like that sort of thing. You know, it has one of those square ends on it. You could give it like a little edge line or something there. And then it has eyes all over, so like, well, I think these are eyes anyway. We'll do them as sort of those traditional Japanese triangles. Yeah, but they are eyes, so we'll add some stuff inside. I'll do one more. And then these lines just to show that this is kind of fabric. A bit of texture just to make it look like it's wrapped. Which we want for these kinds of traditional Japanese swords. Okay, so then, oh, another one here, another triangle eye thing. Right, so then the hilt. So we'll just go just beside his thumb. Up here, I don't know, maybe like an edge line. Another one there. Another edge here, I think. And then a purple sort of attachment or something there. And then our sword. So we'll go boop, slightly curves down. Rough 
roughly I'm trying to go this way and then the middle like so right and before I add all the details and stuff on that sword we'll just finish the hair just coming down behind his body all this way you do texture and stuff on this hair if you want and some more over this side so that'll just go whatever way you want really so just down behind there and then there's eyes on the sword and some more anatomy so like his shoulder muscles so you like come in here like to this sort of V so you'll have like a deltoid muscle there his bicep in there Collarbone always go from, goes from the middle of your throat to your shoulder, right? So it comes across that way. And then here as well. And, you know, some, like, hatching and things. Like that. And then shoulder muscle there. Deltoid. Bicep. Like his chest muscles, like, here somewhere. Do do do, right? Some like muscle sinewy fiber lines. Just going that way. Adam's apple. And then they've drawn in some veins, which we will draw in as well. Right, so there's eyes here and then of course his scar. So what do we do first? We do the eyes, I think. Eyes on the sword. Eyes on the prize, baby. Where is it? Here, yeah. So I think they're on the bottom end, right? So we'll just add one here. They don't seem to be in the top section. They could be though, but we'll put them here stay true to the reference and then iris pupil and then lots of veins are they veins or are they those lines it's hard to know I'll go with these first, because... We'll go with these radial lines. I think that's what, I, when I looked at, I looked at the image before, I think that's what it was. So just like the eyes on his head sort of thing. And then I think we got like black sort of veins coming around the sword. Right, and as much of that as you want to do. Um, so then like thickening up some lines around the edge of his body and stuff might help. But I think I'll leave it there. That's how to draw Kokushibo screaming. Hope it's helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.